so many shoes just like this one along the way. Seems like this hike, especially with how hard it is, is where, uh, it's where a lot of pair of shoes go to die. I can see why. Starting the day off in a more Spanish way with just a giant baguette and a croissant, or what was left of a croissant. <laughs> we have really become one with the way of eating here. And uh, yeah, we have our longest walk yet today. Today we're going all the way from Los Arcos to Logroño, which is about 28 kilometers, which can't do the math off the top of my head, but it seems like it'd be about 18 miles. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, as a result of that, we had to say goodbye to a couple friends. They were heading further down the trail. It's always a sad moment. Never gets easier, but uh, maybe we'll make some new friends today. Yesterday was truthfully a pretty low day for us. You start to wonder, why am I on this? Well, in a lot of ways. When we started off the day wrong with a fire alarm. At 5.30 in the morning, that certainly didn't help. And we just kind of felt really, really bored all day. Touche! <laughs> Very nice. And I think honestly that's gonna be our biggest challenge, our biggest opponent throughout this entire thing is just how to deal with boredom. Usually if we get bored of a place or something, we just move on, go somewhere else. And with this, there's not something else to do. It is just walk for six to eight hours and then make it to your hotel, maybe grab some dinner and then head to bed. And it's the exact same thing every single day. I don't think the physical fitness is gonna be a real difficulty for us. I think we're kind of starting to adapt to that. The load is not so bad, and now that we kind of figured out our packs, it seems to be working all right. Yeah, every morning we wake up around 6.30, 7 o'clock. Get ready in about 10 to 15 minutes and get up and go. Usually buy some sort of bread. Walking stick and bread, all we need. And fill up our water bottles and begin our trek. And Usually our moods in the mornings are pretty good. We set our intentions and our goals and our hopes for the day and we feel pretty hopeful for the entire day. Then around mile six or seven when the sun starts coming out, it just starts to drag a little bit. Mile 10 or 12, my feet start to get sore and I feel like it's never going to end. <laughs> yeah, we go through the same cycle of hopefulness. to overheating. Looking good. Thank you, I feel good. To despair. Are we there yet? <laughs> Every single day. <laughs> and I don't know, I guess yesterday it just really started getting to us. Yesterday was one of the first days that we got to the hotel pretty early, mostly because of the fire alarm in the morning gave us <laughs> a head start. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I just passed out as soon as I sat down on the couch. Yeah, and yesterday, pretty much the whole day, we were just avoiding talking to people. We just weren't feeling like it. And that's kind of an option on the Camino, but also kind of not. I think it was somewhere between a mixture of this overwhelming feeling of just how much longer the Camino is and just how many more miles that we've got to go, which is like 400. We've been walking for a week and we've only made it maybe 15 to 20% of the way. When you say it like that, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then just wrestling with this uh, problem of boredom. So boredom is only one of the three real villains of the Camino. Uh, the other two are sun and heat. And <laughs> now they might sound like the same thing, but, but they're not. The sun starts getting really intense right around 10 a.m., but it doesn't really get hot yet. But still around 10 a.m., you get sunburn. And then usually around 2 or 3 p.m., it just gets unbearably warm. And there's just nothing you can do about it. I mean, heat and sun is, is no bueno, but I don't really sunburn as much, thank goodness. <laughs> I feel like the thing that I struggle with the most is staying present and not always looking towards the future. How you doing? Are we there yet? On the Camino, of course, you have a lot of time to think. And what I've been thinking about lately is why I'm so anxious to just get out of this and move on to the next thing and i think that's been telling for our whole year mm -hmm. we've been moving fast 
this is so long. Do you think if I run faster, then we'll get there faster? Yep, yeah, that's how planes work. <laughs> Trying to get to the next place. And I don't know, I really just want to be able to stay present and enjoy what we can here. And I have a feeling that everybody that comes in the Camino kind of goes through the same crucible that we're going through right now of just fighting this uh, this boredom because there's just there's nothing to do but just walk all day every day and that's a very different shift and that's also one of the reasons why we wanted to do this in the first place yeah. it's just honestly a little more difficult to adapt to than we thought so after wrestling with this quite a bit the last couple of days, we talked about ways that we could change this. We talked to some friends who've done the Camino. We've talked to people who are walking the Camino now. And I think it all comes down to doing what's best for you, doing this your way. I know that's really cheesy because that's what people say when they do the Camino. They say, there's no right way. There's no one way. There's your way. I think we just have to give ourselves a little bit of room to do things the way that we think is right for us, which might mean slowing down, which might mean taking breaks, and might mean switching it up. Walking some days, not walking others. A lot of people take buses on this route. I think, I think for us, one, the Camino is probably a little bit too long, considering how many other plans that we have in Europe and how long our Schengen visa is. You only get 90 days out of every 180. So, both out of necessity and probably out of our sanity, I think we're going to end up shortening this thing by maybe 10 or maybe 12 days total. So instead of the full 35 days, we might do uh, three weeks or so. I think one of the biggest things, and that's hard for me, honestly, is to take any guilt away from that. If we make it to Santiago, we make it. If we don't, we still have had an awesome, really great experience meeting people we never would have met before. And the amazing thing that I think we're overlooking constantly is that we've already walked about 100 miles. That's a massive amount of mileage and something I probably would have never done maybe even in a month or maybe even in a year mm -hmm. to walk 100 miles. So, I don't know. I think we've I think we've already accomplished something great and to try to do this thing to anyone else's standards of what like the right way to do it is just seems like it would be doing it wrong. I think for me the thing that I really just want to escape and, and hopefully work on for the next few days is changing my mentality. It's no longer about how many miles we walk or where we make it. Do we make it to Santiago by foot or by bus or by bike or how fast we go. This is so far just been a great experience. Some challenges but it's life. But of course we're saying all that one mile in. We'll let you know if we uh, feel the same level of optimism at, you know, 10 or 15 miles in. We keep stopping for blackberries. So pointy. They're so good. We keep saying, okay, let's go. That's enough. And then we find some good ones. That's a good one. Wow. It's like, here's a good bunch. We're seeing so many shoes just like this one along the way. Seems like this hike, especially with how hard it is, is where, uh, it's where a lot of pair of shoes go to die. I can see why. I'm a YouTuber now. Wow. Whoa, so many camera moves. Wow. <laughs> Such a YouTuber, holy cow. You've Such lost cinematography. It. You've lost it. Oh. Wow. What are we cheersing to? This is our first real, like actual legit lunch break. We sat down for two beers and a potato tortilla as they call it here. And I'm amazed. This is so nice. This will get us through. So we've walked 12 miles since we got up this morning. And we got maybe another six to go, I think, maybe five. I think physically we're both doing just fine. We're definitely slowing down as this whole day comes to an end. You know, we're walking slower than we were when we started, but 
Honestly, I thought today was going to be a lot harder than it currently feels, but I'm sure I'm going to regret saying exactly that in another three or four miles. <laughs> We're just kind of walking at our own paces. I'm listening to music. Lisa's listening to some podcasts. It's beautiful out there. So I just wanted to quick answer the question that we've been seeing a lot of, and that is, will I get lost when I'm on the Camino? And then will I ever lose my way? Will I ever not know what the right way is? And I guess, first of all, I'd say there isn't really a right way except for to just end up in Santiago. But even then, not everybody goes all the way to Santiago. Some people, a lot of people that we've met have just been doing this for seven to 10 days and sometimes just a weekend. So, eh. So to make this an official Camino, the bare minimum that you have to do is walk the last 100 kilometers, which is from Saria all the way to Santiago de Compostela, or you have to bike from about 160 kilometers out. Sorry, but I don't remember the name of that city in particular. Um, and you also need to get two stamps into your pilgrim's passport every single day, and you can get that pilgrim's passport all the way in Saria. You get these stamps from each hotel or Abajay that you stay at each night. In addition to every restaurant you go to, some grocery stores have them, some churches have them. It's really quite easy to get two stamps per day. Basically, everybody wants to stamp your passport. You should let them because it looks really cool. But honestly, I think it'd be really, really difficult to get lost in this because literally every 50 to 100 feet, there's either a bright yellow arrow, such as that one right there or the one behind me here. Or right just right there. there. Or one over there. Or there's the shell symbol. And you just kind of follow all of those. And what we've experienced is that basically every time that we don't know where to go, if we just stop and look around for a second, you'll see that there's a symbol telling you exactly which way to go. So as long as you're following the sage advice of Ace of Base and opening up your eyes and seeing the signs, I think it's honestly pretty difficult to get lost and I wouldn't worry about it too much. I saw the sun, it opened up my eyes, I saw the sun, I possible that 17 or 18 miles is just a little too far for us today. <laughs> how you feeling over there? So how you feeling over there? <laughs> Pretty good. It was a little too celebratory earlier at lunch. This will get us through. Thinking, yeah, this break is just what we needed and we're gonna finish this with the triumphal march. And my feet feel like bones, just bones right now. Just bones. Today's been 18 miles of basically no shade, a lot of uphill, really, really hot. This is kind of, this is definitely testing us today for sure. <sighs> this last little bit is slowly, slowly drying up my soul. So close by car. Tan line. Don't, I know, my sock tan. Josh, you can take your socks off. That was a little too much today. Oh, I feel so old. <laughs> oh. Show me your back. It's just an old sweat. Oh, it's so <laughs> gross. You don't want to see it. We have a fan, thank God. Should be mandatory in every room. So that place back there was Calle Lorel, and that is a famous place, apparently throughout all of Spain, for just one thing, pinchos. 
And they have this amazing Patatas Bravas place where that's literally the only thing that they sell. Our friend told us we had to go there, but yeah. <laughs> unfortunately they're closed and all the places on that street are closed and aren't open until 8, 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's only 7.30, which you would think would be pretty prime dinner time, but once again our schedule is off from the Spanish eating schedule. Uh, we found a place nearby that happened to be a little more open. So we were walking around the city and we just had such a great time. But I think we're just gonna stay another night. Yeah. What do you think? I want more patatas bravas. Yeah, like the food, the vibe around here just had enough but didn't feel too big. I don't know, it felt really cool. So we're gonna slow down a little bit. We're not in a hurry. And uh, check this place out for one more night. Yeah, this Camino can be any way that we want it to be. Yeah. We can stay, we have the flexibility to stay and just I'm excited. I got really excited. <laughs> and it gives us some time to rest our feetsies. Yeah. And plus, honestly, most importantly, we're just tired. We need a day off. <laughs> so that's it for the video today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I have made art. The sun, uh, the sun comes out basically every morning, uh, you know, as you know, <laughs> physics and stuff. God, uh, the Earth is round. <clears throat> I'm choking on a piece of bread. He ate too fast. Great. It was just lovely. You sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely not right. Yeah. Dude, look at this chonker. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Lisa's busy back there editing. Uh, I just, uh, Lisa's busy back, Lisa's busy back. Hi, kitty. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say.